वेलकम व्यूअर्स टू हिस्ट्री एट इट्स बेस्ट हिस्ट्री एट इट्स बेस्ट प्रेजेंट्स रिकंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ पास्ट फ्रॉम बिगिनिंग दिस इज अरीज ऑफ वीडियोज एंड आवर सेकेंड वीडियो इज अबाउट स्टोन एज इन दिस वीडियो विल स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन देन विल टॉक अबाउट जियोलॉजी जियोलॉजिकल इपॉक्स पैलियोलिथिक एज एंड डिविजन मेजोलिथिक एज एंड देन विल टॉक अबाउट द न्यूलिथिक एज In this video we'll discuss about the various concepts related to stone age and its implications while assuming different aspects in appro and approaches the most important transitions of prehistoric period are included in this age like conceptualization bipedalism rapid expansion in brain size etc cranial capacity we'll also discuss about the cultural evolution of early human kind Geology is very important in prehistoric period reconstruction of prehistoric period because geology provides a chronological framework for the evolution of the earth and many aspects of the remote past have to be viewed in the context of chronology Geological epochs Geologists divide the history of planet earth into eons which are subdivided into era subdivision of era is are called periods which in turn are subdivided into epochs in geological terms periods and epochs have a small time spans the most important era is cenozoic era which is further divided into two periods first is tertiary second is quaternary and tertiary period is further divided into five epochs first is paleocene second is eocene oligocene miocene and then pliocene and uh, the territory period is ended with the pliocene with the 1.64 million years ago then we'll talk about quaternary uh, period it is further divided into two if two geological epochs first is pleistocene then holocene the paleolithic age uh, we'll talk about paleolithic age and uh, in this uh, in this video we'll talk about the in this uh, context we'll talk about the characteristics and features of this age we'll talk about paleolithic cultures interglacials important sites and at last we'll talk about the tool making so first of all the conceptualization was very important concept because the concept of the tool presides the tool like the tool maker should be able to form a metal mental image of the tool which is to be obtained all these functions can only be performed with greater mental capacity there can be no doubt that the larger brain of homo habilis uh, approximately 800 cc and homo erectus uh, homo erectus approximately uh, 1000 cc and beyond and the beginning of the tool making were closely interlinked so Uh, the cultural transition was very important like uh, the uh, a lot of cultures was uh, were originated uh, during this age the mother child bond physical dexterity are very important concepts are also a very important concepts in this age we'll talk about the paleolithic cultures uh, in lower paleolithic cultures we'll talk about will uh, we have old one uh, acheulean clactonian and levallosian and in the middle paleolithic cultures will have the most prominent mosterian culture and then the uh, then in the upper paleolithic cultures will will have oregonesian uh, solutrean and magdalenian cultures then the interglacials or the warmer intervals were very important because it caused the ice ages to come like geologists have identified several ice ages each glaciation took place at intervals of about 1 lakh years like the last ice age which is also referred to the uh, to as the worm uh, worm glaciation uh, began in 1 lakh 18000 years ago and was most extensive prece preceded by an interglacial during which the climate was warmer it was during this time the earliest homo sapiens came into existence the ice ages came to an end at uh, 12000 years ago uh, which marks the beginning of holocene epoch or the uh, or post glacial ge geological epoch so 
the important sites of the age was old way gorge uh, which is in east africa then the saint ashul uh, which is also recognized as the ashulian uh, culture uh, then the torbola in spain le moster in france uh, in north china there are several sites in north china hoxne in england england shanidar cave in iraq altamira caves in spain and uh, less uh, less cox in france these all sites uh, witnessed the great uh, evolution of human kind or mankind while there is there are a lot of discoveries and uh, uh, archaeological evidences at these sites and also discoveries of fire uh, new tools and etc are also been a part of this sites then we'll talk about the tool making and weapons so tool making was very crude and rudimentary so the tools were made up of pebbles pear shaped or tear drop shaped and x was the first uh, we can say the first tool uh, were introduced in this age during this age the mosterian tools were important uh, during this time burins small blades harpoons even spear like weapons were made so these are pebbles and this is the technique this technique technique is called bulb of percussion technique or revolution technique in the in the uh, different cultures there are different names like revolution culture mosterian culture and revolution technique mosterian technique so this is a simple and basic uh, technique there is a core tool and uh, one uh, one can hammer a uh, core tool and uh, with this uh, will have flake and uh, during uh, with this flake they make uh, different types of tools and these all uh, call the bulb of percussion percussion or the hammer axel technique the first uh, tools introduction of tools were hand axe uh, these are hand axe then the burin harpoon let's talk more talk about the mesolithic age the term mesolithic was used specifically for the hunting and food gathering cultures of europe in early post glacial time the post glacial epoch began with 12000 years ago and uh, uh, like uh, it it uh, stands for before past and it's reckoned from 1950 so that uh, it means 12000 years before 1950 which could also be written as 10150 bc uh most of the dates are in uh, before past because uh, there is a simple archaeological uh, there's a uh, there's a archaeological evidences and uh, by this uh, they recognize reckon the dates into bp or before past much of the evidences of the new picture of the european mesolithic comes from uh, scandinavia and north europe so we'll talk about uh, more talk about scandinavia and north europe mesolithic diet was increasing, uh, increasingly diversified during this time and at last we'll talk about the microliths so scandinavian culture attempted to realize the full potential of the hunting and food gathering okay seafood came to occupy a central place in the economy and different types of fish of which salmon become a great favorite and sea animals like dolphins seals and whales etc fishing hooks nets and harpoons have uh, have been also discovered at the mesolithic sites extremely little sharp edge microliths microliths is a very important concept in uh, mesolithic age where is the microliths were discovered at this age regular use of bows and arrows were uh, also identified canoes were made for navigations and domestication of dogs for, for hunting is also evident then we'll talk about the north europe the north europe is subdivided like the these cultures were subdivided into three parts first is maglimos kongimos and then atobole maglimos started with the 9500 before past to 7700 before past then 707 7700 to 600 uh, 6600 before past then 6600 before past to uh, 
1200 before pa before passed at the Artibolo. In the transition from the Megli Mose to the Kongi Mose and then the Artibolo periods, Scandinavian Mesolithic communities grew uh, extraordinarily large. They lived in densely populated settlements. By the Artibolo period, there is evidence of exchange with some farming communities as well. Sweden, Denmark, and uh, other parts of southern uh, Scandinavia were the major centers of the Mesolithic culture. This has been called a complex hunting society or uh, the price said that the uh, this was an age of innovation, interaction and successful adaptation among the early post-glacial uh, hunter-gatherers of northern Europe. Mesolithic age saw the beginning of sedentism. Sedentism is about the uh, about living in a particular area for a long time. Then we'll talk about the grasslands. Grass, grass is a very uh, revolutionary uh, concept because uh, grass uh, encourage uh, encouraged and forced the tree dwellers to come up and uh, uh, to come up and. Uh, create new concepts or make new uh, things like uh, bipedalism was an important concept in this uh, was, bipedalism was the origin of the concept so the natufian culture marks the transition from paleolithic or mesolithic to neolithic so natufian subsisted, uh, sub, uh, subsisted on the collection of wild cereals and nuts and hunting of gazelles like circular herds were made by them storage areas for plant and food also uh, is an evidence uh, then introduction of sickles by natufians is very important like oldest uh, sickles were made from bone during this time and natufians have uh, are the most uh, are the oldest founders of sickles oldest uh, creators of sickles Suta uh, suitable for cutting uh, cutting cereal grasses like wild grasses wild cereals etc till as late as the 1940s dates for neolithic settlements were highly uh, unrealistic and frequently based on guesswork from the 1950s a vast amount of new archaeological evidence has become available like uh, radioactive carbon dating method was very revolutionary began in 1940 to archaeology this method was was uh, developed in the la late 1940s by Willard Libby which is also a Nobel Nobel Prize uh, in uh, which is who received the Nobel Prize in chemistry for the work in 1960 it is based on the fact that radiocarbon active radioactive carbon C14 is constant, constantly being created in the atmosphere by the resulting of uh, C14 combines with the atmospheric oxygen to form radioactive carbon uh, dioxide which is incorporated into plants to photosynthesis animals then acquire C14 by eating the plants so this is a basic concept of uh, C14 carbo uh, radioactive carbon dating so there are a lot of um, methods uh, insta instead of C14 like dendrochronology and a lot of dating methods We'll talk about the Palestinian Neolithic sites were nearly 8,200 years old. So the Neolithic West Asia began in around 10,500 before past. Nearly 150 early Neolithic sites have been discovered in West Asia. These sites are lo located in a belt extending from the Dead Sea region in the Palestinian Israel or the Jordan Valley or then the Syria and the North Iraq the Zagros mountains and the parts of West Iran. On the west, this belt extends to southern Turkey. The earliest Neolithic settlements have been found in two areas of the West Asia. First is Palestine or Israel and North Iraq. In Palestine, the uh, most important site is at Jericho. In northern uh, Iraq, there are two important sites. First is Zavi Chemidar, uh, Chemi Shanidar which is 11,000 before past and Jarmo both were located at the foothills of the Zagros mountains. Pre-Pottery Neolithic A, uh, New Neolithic A and Pre-Pottery Neolithic B were the earliest pottery uh, have been seen in the Neolithic age. They built round huts. They, uh, these were followed later on by uh, better built rectangular houses having courtyards. The houses have large storage pits 
obviously for storing seeds and nuts pottery was a technological advancement the chemical nature of the clay is changed by bringing it in contact with the fire ovens had to be made where high temperatures could be constantly maintained for the time period to bake the clay so the chemical reaction between the clay and the fire is a revolutionary change in this age baskets made by upper paleolithic and mesolithic cultures out of certain types of plants might have suggested the shapes of shapes of shapes for the first pottery vessels in the neighborhood of jericho abu herera abu herera uh, in uh, syria and ain gazal in jordan also provide evidence of the beginning of agriculture abu uh, herera covers a large area almost about uh, 28 acres cultivation cultivation of wheat and barley and wheat and barley were the main crops during this period they also domesticated sheep and goats jericho versus jarmo is a very important concept it has been suggested that there might have been several other neolithic settlements along with the nil and nil river and the agricultural agriculture might have begun in egypt uh, do, uh, approximately 7000 before past the distinctive feature of the neolithic was food production so food production is very important concept in neolithic age like farming uh, during the time along with the domestication of the animals in place of hunting and gathering since the transition to food production coincided with the end of ice ages a number of prehistorians have regarded environmental changes as a significant factor in the transition v gordon child one of the greatest prehistorians of this century put forth the view that the post pleistocene epoch there was a general process of desiccation or drying up this resulted in a very close relationship between humans and animals some of which were subsequently domesticated Breadwood sought to explain the shift to pro food production in cultural terms he argued that agriculture developed in certain areas uh, which are also called nuclear zones where potentially cultivatable uh, culti- cultivable plants like wild cereal gla- grasses lentils etc Lewis Binford suggested that demographic factors were responsible for the shift to agriculture binford uh, differentiates between two types of habitats first is optimal and then marginal according to flannery these developments were presided by a shift from a narrow spectrum to a broad spectrum economy mark cohen has re-sta- restated the case of population case for population being the major factor underlying the origin of agriculture at the end barbara bender has been very critical of theories which center around population growth she has argued that increase uh, in population cannot be itself be regarded as a prime mover please like the video share as much as you can subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon comment your feedback or question in the comment box Thanks for watching my video and wait till until I upload the next video.